Okay, so let's take a look at some of the uh, stories in the business pages today. I'm joined by Ashok Kumar, who is a fellow at Queen Mary University. Um, I want to start with a plumber in the UK. Um, there is a business in the UK, which I'm sure you're aware of, called Pimlico Plumbers. It was set up by somebody who was like 15 and had nothing. This is the guy who set it up, Chris Mullins. And um, he now runs a business, uh, with, which is gigantic. It's the largest group of plumbers in the UK. And the fact is that some of them are employed by him and some of them work freelance. So they're not, uh, they're just, they have their own vans and they have their own tools. I think they rent the vans from him, actually. Yeah. And he was in court um, over a particular case involving a particular plumber. Right. And it was an appeals court. Uh, to appeal a judgment that all, had already happened to recognize what was previously uh, recognized as employees. So, you know, um, what they call in the U.S. independent contractors, but here self-employed as workers. So then they have access to statutory uh, benefits, workers' rights, potentially freedom of association. So, yes, he was arguing that uh, this particular person had chosen to work in this way and worked exclusively for his company, but had chosen to work in a way that might have been tax beneficial or whatever. But the court said, look, he works for you all of the time, so therefore you have to offer him these benefits. And this is interesting, yeah. <laughs> excuse me, in the context of the growth of the gig economy. Yeah, it's really, I mean, look, the fact is people step into an Uber, uh, people get a Deliveroo, and they understand implicitly, almost intuitively, that this person works for that company. It's not that hard to understand why they should have access to the benefits that are afforded to the employees of a company. So this is quite a landmark case. And there's a, a, a case of Deliveroo that's now going to, through the courts as well. And the potential is monumental. It could mean freedom of association and the right to bargain and the right to union. So I think it's, it really is quite a monumental case. OK, let's move swiftly to Greece, which has been in the news, and we've talked about it a fair amount, actually. But um, uh, the possibility of another bailout looms. But this country has struggled so hard, is not it? It, it? it really has. And I think, look, the fact is, another bailout under the similar conditions, and it looks like that's what it's going to be, under similar conditions, means that Greece will never escape the orbit of debt. So if you want to actually see Greece, so for example, um, uh, Greece in, in, uh, had generated in the last quarter of 2016 2.5 billion euro. Rather than reinvest that to make sure that you have redistribution, reinvestment, a healthy economy, what you have is parasitic debtor, uh, uh, creditors. Uh, creditors in Brussels siphoning it out. So how do you expect Greece to ever escape? Get it out of the this? spiral. Yeah. Um, let's take a look also at another story, yeah. and that is Trump. Now, uh, Donald Trump has said that he is going to offer a tax deal, a phenomenal tax deal, in the next couple of months. Now, it is true to say uh, that whatever skepticism people may have, about his policy. It is true to say that corporation tax in the US is incredibly high yeah. and a lot of US firms have money abroad that needs to be repatriated, surely. Yeah, sure. I mean, the fact is, it's quite shocking that the global markets are responding to every outlandish thing that, uh, that um, Trump is saying, but I think that'll diminish over time. So we ha it's yet to be seen what's going to happen, but we can kind of guess what's gonna, what kind of tax plan we'll see. We'll see probably uh, increases uh, we'll probably see a diminished taxes on uh, exports. There we must leave it. I think a different focus. Thanks for joining us, and thank you.